pop culture, by the way, there's a particular website that I visit now and then. Check out a video or two. And it's got these ads that run on the right side. It's got a lot of ads. Yeah. But these ads, the one is, don't you call an ugly woman, a desperate woman. Why? And you can have sex tonight. Why? <laughs> they, desperate women need sex too. Beauty, beauty is skin deep, but ugly goes right to the bone. <laughs> oh my God. Sexual norms revolving around more casual, uncommitted intimacy say their research is sometimes misunderstood to mean that sex is newly rampant on college campuses. Instead, LaSalle University Associate Professor Kathleen Ugh. A. Bogle likens the change to switching romantic scripts. With the dating script, it was like, I'm going to date someone, and that might lead to something sexual happening. Whereas with hookups, it's the other way around. Said Bogle, author of Hooking Up, Sex, Dating, and Relationships on Campus. That might be why college students are increasingly likely to have had sex with friends or casual dates, other studies suggest. Where do they find these friends, casual dates, these hookups? Uh, is there a book on how to hook up? Friends. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, oh, f oh, they have friends. Yeah. You have friends, and, and they, they eventually do things and together. They, and they, they, they probably go to private in-house parties. You know, they probably go to uh, private get-togethers, and they, and they, so they, they might, maybe they meet people through other friends. Friends of friends of friends of friends. That might be why college students are increasingly likely to have had sex with friends or casual dates, or stu our studies suggest. Young adults have been pushing off marriage until later in life. Many students, eager to forge careers and have adventures, see peril in a relationship that could limit their opportunities. Well, it's only peril if, if that's what you want in your life. If you want if you want to play the field, then don't don't get serious and don't get married. You know, don't act. Don't don't say you want a relationship, a serious relationship, and act like you're single or unattached. You know, if, if somebody wants to be seriously involved in a real love relationship. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, but as far as marriage goes, uh, the piece of paper, the contract, the marriage certificate, and the ceremony, many people today obviously do not keep their marriage vows and treat their marriage like it was just a piece of paper. So a person can be... Well, if George Bush could say that the Constitution is just a goddamn piece of paper, what the hell is a certificate of marriage? A lot less. It's a it's lot a less. It's a goddamn piece of paper. It's a piece of paper, which means that a person who is very really loves you and 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 is devoted and and stays with you, you know, the clock is is the the calendar is proof of you know the sincerity of the love. The, if the person stays with you over the test of time and they're with you through thick and thin then the, the marriage certificate is not important because I know people who had the marriage certificate and the vows taken it didn't mean anything it went out the window well Phil of the duck dynasty the yeah. patriarch of the clan he was not married to Miss Kate they're married some 40 years or whatever. Yeah. So the other day on the show, they got married. Uh, well, uh, Gene Simmons of, of the rock group KISS was a cohabitating, yeah, the tongue, tongue man, lengua. Ah. Ah. 
Oh, your <coughs> tongue is still black. What are you yeah. turning into a chow dog? Well, I don't. <coughs> the chows have a black tongue. I've had it for some time, and I'm thinking that maybe, yes. just maybe, it might have something to do with the catalase. Do you? So do you, I disrupted taking it. Do you have uh, any discomfort <coughs> with your tongue? Any 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 pain or discomfort? See, that's that's something you got to be concerned about. But getting back to uh, examples, hey, uh, uh, Sharon, Shannon Tweed, former Playboy, uh, I guess, Playmate of the Year, uh, has been, was his main squeeze for many, many years, and uh, they, were, they were a couple, they were unmarried couple, but they were a couple nonetheless, they had children, right? And then I think they got, they decided to get married because Shannon Tweed, kept on pressuring him and uh, but hey it's just the the legality of it if, you, if you're with somebody long enough they call it like common law wife right common law relationship yeah so a lot uh, a lot of the laws that that are involved in a real marriage take effect so so, so so speak but 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 the point is it's paper as long as the person is with you only time tells. As the record, which is our local paper, yes, <coughs> noted in a recent editorial, the United States Postal Service is an American institution well worth preserving. That's true. The Postal Service, older than the country itself, mm -hmm. and rooted in the Constitution today, provides Americans and their businesses with the world's most affordable delivery service. It's also the centerpiece of a 1.3 trillion dollar national mailing industry, employing 7.5 million Americans in the private sector, including 265,000 193 in New Jersey. The unique postal service network contributes in other ways to our society, including the city's readiness initiative under which letter carriers volunteer and are trained to deliver medicines house to house in major metropolitan areas in the event of a biological attack. I'd like to see UPS do that. UPS, they're lucky they can they can deliver regular packages, normal packages. Letter carriers also conduct the nation's largest annual single day food drive. The second Saturday each May. This year Bergen County letter carriers collected an extraordinary 800,000 pounds for distribution to local food pantries. Obviously the ones that Christie cut. Yeah, they cut the food pantries. But you can tell Christie's food, food supply was never cut. Carriers nationwide collected one quarter pound of food per person. Generous Bergen County Postal customers donated nearly a pound on average. This is timely because school food programs don't operate in the summer. Northern New Jersey letter carriers have led the nation 20 straight years in raising money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Letter carriers official charity and as New Jerseyans experienced in Sandy's aftermath, letter carriers are key to normalcy and stability in difficult times. Yet, the Postal Service faces financial problems. This is getting back to what I was telling Billy. Yeah, I know. The question is how to resolve these problems in a manner that preserves this important institution rather than dismantles it. 
to figure that out requires understanding what the problems are and what they are not. The red ink doesn't stem from postal service provided by the public, to the public, by the postal service. Not door-to-door -door delivery, not Saturday delivery, nor is it caused by the internet-related rise in email communications. If that sounds counterintuitive, look at the facts. In the first quarter of this fiscal year, for example, the Postal Service had a net operating profit of $100 million. The Postal Service took in $17.7 billion in revenue from selling stamps. The agency is self-funded and hasn't had a dime of taxpayer money in 30 years. Now they have a website where you can print things from it. Yeah. Post office. And it spent $17.6 billion delivering the mail. Those expenditures include every expense facing a typical business, workers' pay, benefits, trucks and fuel, buildings and maintenance, etc. And the revenue side takes into account the impact of the Internet such as lowered first-class mail volume because of online bill paying. What about the many people who can't afford a computer and to pay for internet and, and who live in rural areas that rely more on their postal deliveries? While first-class mail revenue declined 2%, package revenue rose 9%. As more folks ordered items online, people are shopping online more than than uh, in person, actually, because you save money. You know, it's it's convenient and and the, and the prices are better. Yeah, online shopping is is going to replace the retail store. This performance is all the more impressive given the lingering poor economy. And yet, as was widely reported the Postal Service had a $1.3 billion in red ink in the first quarter. Why? Because of Congressional Interference. Ah, uh, so, Congressional Interference. In 26... Republicans. Lawmakers mandated that the Postal Service pre-fund future retiree health benefits for the next 75 years and pay for it all within 10 years. No other company or agency is required to pre-fund for even one stinking year. But the right wingers sure want to impoverish Americans. No. And they want destroy. UPS and Federal Express and DHL to own the business of the post office. That's what they want. Yeah, they want to privatize everything. Correct. That unfair burden which is about $5.5 billion a year, accounts for 100% of this year's red ink. And in some quarters, as noted above, actually wipes out what otherwise were profits. Huh. Congress created this mess. What, what else is new? And can Congress should. Fix it. Well, not the Republican Congress. Unfortunately, because they don't want to cooperate with anybody. Some lawmakers want to use the very financial <sighs> crisis they helped bring to the United States Post Office to dismantle an institution that millions of Americans and small businesses rely on. 
rather than addressing pre-funding, they want to degrade service by ending home delivery, by eliminating Saturday delivery, and more. Remember, people just don't get it. Like he was talking about the two-party system. They just don't get it yet. The Republicans are evil. They are evil. Not just a second party. They are an evil party. And, and many, many individuals, and some of them very intelligent individuals, just don't get it. They, and it goes over their head or they, or they change the subject. When you try to tell them how evil Republicans are uh, with uh, the capitalistic system, it, it, it's an evil entity. Well, and it goes over their head, or they just don't want to accept it. Most Republicans tie up capitalism, democracy, their their idea of democracy, and religion together. Well, um, these three things are secret and shall not be criticized in America. Yeah. Well, well you are not patriotic. Well, I had a, I had a, uh, one day this, um, uh, this week. I think it was Tuesday when I, I met with Billy Morrow uh, in town. He, um, he said to me, I was, I was talking something. I was talking about mm -hmm. something. With the uh, the people we know that work at the at the local McDonald's, uh, I usually you know Billy gets his uh, uh, he goes there in the morning he gets his free egg sandwich they they give a lot of coupons out so he gets has coffee it's right right near the Holiday Inn by the Teterboro Airport so all the all the pilots from the private jets go to stay at the Holiday Inn so he gets to meet a lot of muckety mucks so anyway I meet him in the afternoon I get my uh, my large strawberry shake with no with strawberry shake topping topping I don't want whip I don't want that hydrogenated fat cool whip whipped cream fake whipped cream and a maraschino cherry so I says top it off with milkshake strawberry shake topping which is kind of sounds funny, but they, you know. Anyway, we sit down. I, I, I find out that Dr. Oz was at this McDonald's that same morning filming. So I go up and I, I get some, I needed some napkins because they don't put out napkin dispensers anymore. You know, I guess people, a lot of people are taking home napkins. So anyway, I, and I'm telling one of the young men that we talk to a lot, um, about Dr. Oz, he said. He oh, he said to me on his own. Hey, did you know Dr. Oz was here? I didn't. I didn't even bring up Oz's name. So I says, Yeah, I know Dr. Oz was here. And if I was here and he came up to me and asked me a question, I tell him exactly how I feel. <laughs> Dr. Oz, okay, promotes uh, the use of vaccines, but he would not allow his children to receive vaccines okay so the gentleman behind the counter says that sounds hypocritical oh, I yeah. says well yeah I says he's, he's, a, he's, he's, he's like a hypocrite. he's a hypocrite Corp corporate whore, like? corporate whore uh, a big pharma big pharma whore and even though he has a TV show because uh, when he had a TV show about um, about uh, anti-aging uh, you know what his uh, prescription for anti-aging was? He didn't mention anything about antioxidants or vitamins, minerals, or herbs or anything. He says Botox injections. So I know he's big pharma. Anyway, Dr. Oz, so Billy Morrow says to me, Ah, so you're one of those troublemakers. You sound like a troublemaker. I says, no, I'm just a very honest, straightforward, truthful person. He says, oh, no. You gotta bite your tongue, in, 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 especially in the business world, in business, business. Yes, you I do. Said, what, do you, what do you like to say, that word business? So, you yeah, you gotta bite your tongue. I said, why do you have to bite your tongue in business? 
I said, you bite your tongue in business. Now, this is what I try to explain to you all the time. If you wish to get ahead in that world, yes, you do have to bite your tongue. In that, in that world? Yeah. But where else do you actually get ahead? You know? Aside from the business world. Sorry, does, that, does that include the uh, uh, Hollywood and uh, entertainment industry and like if you're on a talk show well you can only go so far well there are listen there are controversial people and uh, uh, controversial celebrities that speak their mind to an extent but to an extent that's correct in other words <clears throat> if they start to expose and buck the establishment that helps pay them there you go then there's a problem, right? Then there's a problem. You know, like... Uh, and you also got the problem. If, let's just stay in the religious sphere for yeah. a moment. Let's say you were preaching the kingdom of God from the Bible and what is in the Bible, etc., etc. Right. Well, according to this world, you will only be a certain amount of success. You will not be large, yeah. okay, as Luke 32, 12 says. You won't be accepted into the, into the uh, established religious circle? Correct. The fold? The fold. So, though you may, uh, let's take for instance, uh, uh, God's church today. They're on television. They're on radio. They're in print. Etc. 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 But are they mainstream? No. No. And they won't be. They won't be. You're talking about the uh, people that make up the original Church of God, doing what is in the Bible, telling people what is in the Bible, etc. 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 You will right. not <clears throat> be a success in this world. So, but if you're one of those phony baloney prosperity preachers you'll have a mega church you'll have a mega church <laughs> 10,000 people and if you believe in uh, the the blessed spring water like dr. Peter Popoff and you know lay in the hand have somebody having somebody faint and pass out right in front of you oh you know and they're and they're cured they're miraculously cured because of laying on the of the hands you you you'll you'll get millions of dollars in donations right exactly. from people exactly. if you're evangelical and you believe in getting funky and boogieing in, in church and born and, again and born again jumping up and down and with your arms waving hallelujah kissing snakes dancing with taking up serpents taking up serpents up their ass <laughs> whoa no but you, then you're accepted hey look charlie sheen most likely told the truth about his producers of the show Two and a Half Men, but he got fired from Two and a Half Men because he they was didn't a like too what. Outspoken. Huh? A little too outspoken. They didn't like what he said. Yeah. They only let him go too far with that uh, being able to <coughs> attract warm bodies for commercials, you know. <clears throat> Once you start uh, yeah. failing in that area, uh, you're out on the street, pal. Yeah. So if you're like you're a business person, or you're a celebrity, and you suddenly say, uh, "Hey, you know all these commercials that you see late night TV, all these infomercials? Most of them are a bunch of lying nonsense." So crap. You so you Just start to get you to buy some. You start rocking the boat, rocking the boat, rocking the boat, exposing, exposing people. Yeah. Just like uh, if Barack okay. Obama told what the 100 percent absolute truth when he's on national TV okay then which will expose corporations uh -huh. then the people that give gave him money for his campaign withdraw it right away would it would they would cease cease to exist and the, the same thing would happen to Hillary Clinton's campaign uh, her run for uh, in 2016 right yeah if she came clean with her husband at her side and told everything. You know what? I like Brother Wiener. I, 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 I've been, I like his commercials. 
for he's running for mayor of New York City, Anthony Weiner. He did a great job as a congressman for New York State. No, congressman for, for the United and, and, and he was in Washington representing New York State. Not the state. No, he, he fought a section of the state. Yeah, section. He he did a lot for the little guy. He fought hard for the little guy. And, well, you he, know, and he did his job. When it comes down I like, to it. I like Brother Wiener. When it comes down to it, and I have a little more to finish with this. Okay, thing. okay, finish it up. Mr. Wiener, Mr. Hot Dog, didn't do anything wrong. The man just... He just sexted to some chicorinis and showed them pictures of his dingling. He, he never... It's a form of fetish. He never, he never uh, committed right. adultery. Per se. Per se. Per se. He never got, he ne there was no sexual contact. Per se. Per se. So, you know, what did he do? That was wrong. Now, if his wife was really against it, I think a woman would put the man through hell if he just went on and did it on his own anyway. I mean, if she really was against it, she's married to the guy. Whatever. They went into therapy, supposedly, and they did this, and they both accepted it. So, bingo! And plus, she... What I think, did the guy do wrong? I think she wants to be the future first lady of New York City. Possible, or, possible. And she saw a promise in her husband's career, which has a possibility, but then again, it, it upset Hillary. Hillary's all upset about it. I don't know why. Uh, because she don't want to be tainted in any way. She's already tainted. Because they're going to... The conservatives. They might drag yeah. drag up Monica Lewinsky and, and Bill Clinton again. Yeah. But there's a big difference. The, this the point is, is there the, may be a big difference, but again, once you get rid of all the other bullshit involved in it, what did he do wrong? He sat in front of a, a computer and he typed. And sexted. And he, so what? And he sent, uh, I guess he took these pictures when his wife wasn't home, maybe? Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. But what did he do wrong? He just engaged in a form of sexual f fetish. Play. A, a little, a little uh, uh, internet. Play. Sexting. Play. Play. Thank you. Thank you. He didn't. He didn't bang anybody. No. Or 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 do oral to no. anybody or get a hand job. He didn't even get a date. Hand job. Wasn't that a song on the hand job? Jump, 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 hand job. Da, 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 hand da, job. Hand job. America. Yeah, that was a song, right? That was a video I saw a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You know. Right, let me finish here, please. Yeah, finish that up. Gotta go. The former proposal is, as you point out, a confusing and unworkable idea that would compel New Jerseyans to traipse around the neighborhood to cluster boxes in inclemented wind weather. Instead of you having your mailbox out front here, they would have a whole bunch, a bank of mailboxes out there by the highway. And you'd have to walk there every morning to get your mail. Because they they want to cut no they want to cut down the workforce. In other words, it would take longer for the mail carrier to deliver if the mail if you had to go to each individual apartment and each home and and stuff the box. Well in the apartments, most of the apartments they do have that. Downstairs in the lobby they have a Cluster boxes and, cluster and the boxes. mailman just puts the mail so, in each box. So the post office would require less mail carriers to do the cluster. Yeah. And you know it's and all calculated to destroy the US post office. Shrink, 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 government agencies. Hold his phone today. Somebody is trying to Nobody. fuck somebody's trying to fuck with us. Meanwhile, stopping Saturday delivery would raise costs for small businesses, which are open uh, on weekends, 
and would have to contract with expensive private carriers. New Jersey's small mm. businesses employ 1.7 million people. Even from a strict financial standpoint, degrading service is counterproductive. It would ultimately destroy the postal service by driving customers and revenue away. New Jersey's representatives in Washington have a choice. They can degrade service to the public and send the postal service on a downward spiral, or they can fix the pre-funding fiasco so folks can continue to receive the services they have counted on for decades. Privatization in the long run always fails. Well, not making the guy, the guy, you know, the people would get the privatization rich at first, like in Iraq, like I told you, a a a a a, a, a wet dream for the conservatives over there. Okay. Privatize the water or the electric grid, like Halliburton did. Get privatized. They did it in Columbia. Fool around for a month like you're working, take the money, and run. And that's what they did. They, they did it in uh, Columbia, South America. That's why uh, G.W. Bush was so palsy-wowsy with the uh, president of Columbia uh, back then. Uh, everything's privatized. It's all a cow. Uh, oh, if you're poor, if you don't have health insurance, and, and, and you go to the emergency room, and you and you don't have health insurance and you don't have uh, you're not roll you don't have uh, you don't have money to pay you die outside you you you, you sometimes you got to bring your own supplies you got to buy your own supplies you know uh, you got to pay for every little fucking thing every little thing is out of pocket expense there's no government agencies there's no welfare there's no nothing nothing it's all Privatized. Everything is out-of-pocket expense. Oh, it's all taking money from down below and putting it up above. And guess what happened? There's no middle class. There's only the ever-growing poor, getting poorer, and the top percent getting richer. Getting richer. Thank you. And no middle class. And this is exactly the Republican wet dream that we are talking about. And it failed in Iraq, didn't it? Yes. Oh, you and, mean to supply the but troops? But it did make, yeah, for its, 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 its job that it was supposed yeah. to do. But it did make the contractors rich, didn't it? And that's what it really was supposed to do. To help the greedy pieces of shit. That's the, fat, the fat cat's on top. That's correct. That's the only positive thing that happens is to make the, the, the already filthy rich even richer. Yeah. That's it. It doesn't help the mainstream. It doesn't help the... Uh, uh, the masses. Uh, uh, what was it what Spock used to say on Star Trek? The uh, uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. One. Yeah. Well, that's what a progressive would say. That's democracy. That's democracy. Yeah. But but the Republicans. But I and rever Rand. Reverse that. Reverse that. But I and Rand and the Republicans. No, it is self-interest. It is all about self. Self, self-interest, me, 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 the getaway. Me, me, me. The getaway of life. Aye, aye, aye. Thank you. You know, and uh, I mean, I, I know Billy, Billy Morrow grew up in a corporate environment. His father was a, 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 a lifetime IBM executive mm. that traveled the world. He grew up in the corporate environment. His dad was his role model, and I understand he just can't demonize corporations like we can and and the politicians that help corporations and you know that's his choice but I, we got to tell it like it is you know so which what do we got there it's, that's it, it. it's not four o'clock yet is it are you kidding it's quarter five well, then your clock over there is a little screwed up. Quarter to five. That says quarter to five? Correct. All right, then we're out of here. Correct. Okay, people. Thank you for joining us for...
progress of discussions. It has been very invigorating, to say the least. And summer is almost to the end. Where do they, where do they call it when it's hot, closer to fall? Indian summer? Hiya, 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 hiya. How you doing? How you doing? Say goodbye to these people. Goodbye, people.